Thanks. No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 This is just terrible, terrible, terrible news. And I am in no way exaggerating that this is the most awful thing, the most terrible thing that has happened in all of history. Spider-Man, as of now, as of the current situation, is out of the MCU. And this is terrible, not only because Spider-Man is cool, right, and everyone likes him, but also because from a story perspective, viewing the story of the MCU, Spider-Man, Peter Parker, has been built up as this super important character. And we've invested so much time into this character, and, and we've been fed the idea that he's so important and valuable, he's the next Iron Man, he's going to be the next Tony Stark, right? Now, a lot of people have been reporting uh, different things. Some people have said that it's a done deal. Others have said that there's still hope uh, to somehow make a deal. Some people have said it's all Sony's fault. Some people have said it's all Disney's fault. Um, but what I have come across, and I think I'm the only one, um, to discover this, but I've actually found actual video footage of the meeting, of the deal that, that went down. Um, so Sony starts off by, by asking Disney, why, why do you want to change the deal of our agreement? Because the original deal, I guess, was that Disney would make 5% of opening day revenue. But then all other money went to Sony, um, as well as Kevin Feige would be uh, a lead producer on the Spider-Man films. Um, and so when renegotiating, Sony asks, uh, why do you want to change the terms of our agreement? And, and this is uh, the actual video footage of uh, their meeting. If you're good at something, never do it for free. How much you will? Uh, half. <laughs> You're crazy. I'm not. No, I'm not. So yeah, apparently uh, Disney wanted a new offer. Uh, they offered that they would provide half the funding for Spider-Man movies, but in return they would also get half of the revenue. And I've seen some people reporting that it actually wasn't that. It was actually only 30%, but still, uh, that's a lot. Uh, considering Sony owns the rights to make Spider-Man movies. But Sony, of course, wanted to keep their current agreement, which they would make all but 5% of the opening day revenue of all the Spider-Man movies, and then Marvel would still get to use Spider-Man as a character in their other movies. But apparently Disney didn't really like that deal. Um, and to kind of give a fair and balanced view, I guess in Disney's mind, they're thinking... Well, we've sort of revitalized this character. We've made him, he's always been popular, but we've made him like superstar status again. And I mean, there's something to that argument, right? Uh, the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man movies didn't do so well. I liked them, but they didn't do as well at the box office. Um, this past Spider-Man movie, Spider-Man Far From Home, is Sony's highest grossing film ever. So, I mean, there's an argument to be made that, you know, Disney and Kevin Feige, the uh, lead producer of the MCU, there's a good argument to be made that that they're the reason why that was, that they're the reason why Spider-Man has sort of gained this new life. But on Sony's side of the argument, they own the rights and productions to Spider-Man. And why would they bend on their most popular franchise, on their most lucrative uh, IP, right? It doesn't make financial sense for them and so from a business perspective I understand Disney's position and I also understand Sony's position right it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense for Disney to give up their resources if they're not making that much money and it also doesn't make much sense for Sony to share their most profitable intellectual property and so I get it okay I understand but but it's just 
not... It seems the curse of Spider-Man 3 lives on, right? In the original Spider-Man trilogy, the first two Spider-Man movies were great, and the third one was not so much. In Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man trilogy, uh, the f they made two of them, and then they never made the third one. And then in this Spider-Man trilogy, Spider-Man Homecoming, Spider-Man Far From Home, and then Spider-Man Homeless. I'm a man without a home. It's not really Spider-Man Homeless because he's still with Sony, but it's basically what it is. <laughs> As a fan of the MCU, it's just so disappointing that the story is just going to end, right? And there's not going to be a good conclusion. There's not going to be resolution to any of the problems we've seen Peter Parker go through. There's not going to be, <laughs> I don't know, there's not going to be any payoff for all this time that we've invested as fans of these movies, right? And so it's just going to be really lame, and of course, like, we'll survive, right? It's all make-believe anyway. But it's just super disappointing, in my opinion. And I know that other people, there's a good chunk of people that don't particularly like the MCU's version of Spider-Man. They think that he's too dependent on Tony Stark and that Marvel kind of has forgotten about Uncle Ben. And and I appreciate that. I, I appreciate them wanting you know, more of a true-to-the-comics version of Peter Parker. Um, I personally have loved the MCU Spider-Man. I think Tom Holland does an awesome job. I think he's my favorite Spider-Man, and I'm just super sad, you know? If if nothing is worked out, it's just going to be a huge bummer, and it's just going to be really lame and stupid that they're not going to carry on with this part of the story, this story in the MCU. And not only that, but... Sony still has plans to make Spider-Man movies with Tom Holland. And so their Spider-Man movies, if they can't reference the MCU at all, are going to be really lame as well. And so it's just, from a story perspective, it's a lose-lose situation. But, I, again, I get the business decision, but it's just... Uh, personally, I think Disney is more at fault here. Again, I, I realize that they feel like they have earned some more money, uh, but I i mean, they made this deal to begin with, right? They knew going into this whole thing that they would only make 5% on opening day earnings. And if they were okay with it then, why aren't they okay with it now? They still get to use Spider-Man in uh, non-Spider-Man movies so long as they keep this deal. And Sony has come out and said that you know, they were disappointed in Disney's decision, but that it makes sense that since acquiring Fox and thus the rights to the X-Men and Deadpool and, and Fantastic Four and everything, that Kevin Feige is going to be stretched thin. He has more responsibility, plus all of the stuff that they're doing on Disney+, Plus with all of the TV shows that they're making with the MCU, plus all of the movies that they're still releasing. Like, it makes sense that you wouldn't want to give your best guy, Kevin Feige, uh, to someone for free. That said, apparently, Kevin Feige has also been working on every Spider-Man film that has ever been made, right? And that includes Venom, Sony's Venom, that even though Kevin Feige wasn't um, listed as a producer, he still contributed to making that movie. It's like, if he's still going to do it anyway, I don't know, freak, man. The other thing is, yeah, if you don't want to part with Kevin Feige or you don't want to share him with anyone... Send one of your lower level guys that you don't have to pay as much. You know what I mean? Just send someone else to represent the MCU so that they can still work with Sony, so that they can still work together. Because this string of stories has been one of the greatest accomplishments in all of cinematic history. So being willing to part with it so easily just doesn't make sense to me. And so I don't know who to ask, right? We need to change this. This needs to be fixed. So, Kevin Feige, Bob Iger, whoever's in charge of Sony, just do something. Just fix it, please. If only out of charity for the fans. If you can't work out a deal, just, just suck it up one more movie to give us a satisfying conclusion to the Spider-Man story in the MCU. 
please just just find it in your heart somewhere just just to give the fans a good story so that we don't have to feel empty so that we aren't left with this lame debacle i don't know if disney or sony are that charitable or compassionate but i hope so i hope they work something out cuz i've loved spider-man uh, spider-man far from home was up there amongst my favorite marvel movies it was my favorite spider-man movie and so i just ah man i we know Tom Holland's down to play 20 more Spider-Man movies. He said so himself in an interview. I don't know. I just hope they work something out. Uh, what do you guys think? Uh, let me know what your thoughts are. Do you even care? <laughs> I feel like the average person doesn't really care that much, but I don't know. It's, it's just going to be a huge bummer to me. So uh, anyway, I suppose life will go on, but I hope they work something out. All right, well, make sure you subscribe to my channel and give me a like if you want to. Uh, yeah, and that's about it.